What unifies everything and everyone everywhere? This question has baffled physicists and scholars for centuries. Nobel Prize winner Albert Einstein came up with the most respected physics equations, but his dream of finding the unified solution eluded even him. Where should one look for the answer to this universal puzzle? To the past? The future? The ends of the cosmos or beyond? Or inward? Is the answer inside a particle? A proton? Does our consciousness affect the nature of reality? Maybe clues have been left for us throughout the centuries, encrypted in sacred icons and symbols. Who among us can unravel the mysteries? Einstein was a technical assistant at the patent office when in his spare time, he cranked out some of the most remarkable theories. Theories that remain the crux of classical physics today. Einstein once said, any intelligent fool can make things bigger and more complex. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. You expect a physics mastermind to be holed up in a big stone building with ivy crawling up the walls, not on the ski slopes of British Columbia, or swimming with the dolphins off the big island of Hawaii, scuba diving and exploring the Bimini Wall near the Bahamas, or scaling the rest of the physical world, literally and mathematically. Nassim Haramein was born in Geneva, Switzerland in 1962. Like many other savants, this imaginative child frustrated teachers to the point he was ostracized. Few around him knew of the equations, mathematical quandaries, and probabilities that consumed his mind. As a young adult, Haramein spent months living alone in a van in California, tackling these nagging concepts until he met believers who supported his efforts. This is our entrance to the laboratory. Haramein struggled for the next 25 years working alone and with world-renowned physicist Elizabeth Rauscher, testing and finally potentially solving Einstein's dream. This lifetime of decoding started in 1972 when a teacher sparked Haramein's faithful inner journey. This all kind of started when I was about 10 years old and I got in my first geometry class. It was uh, an exciting time because the teacher went to the blackboard and made a little dot and said, today we're gonna learn about dimensions. And when he said dimensions, I got all excited because I thought, oh, he's gonna talk about all these world I live in in my mind and all these other things I'm experiencing. I thought, wow, that's the first adult that's gonna talk about that. And so I got really excited and then I got really, really, really disappointed because after he put the little dot on the blackboard, he said, the dot is dimension zero and it doesn't exist. And I thought, oh, I think I'm gonna fail this class because I could see the dot from all the way in the back of the class. So if I could see it, how is it that it didn't exist? Then he did something even more miraculous. He put a bunch of dots together to make a line, called it dimension one, and said that didn't exist either uh, because it still didn't have volume. Then he put four lines together, made a plane, called it dimension two, said that's the dimension that our comic strip books live in, and he said that doesn't exist either because it still doesn't enclose volume, it's flat. The teacher then did something remarkable. He took six of these non-existing planes, put them together into a cube and said, now the planes enclose volume. This is dimension three, and that's the one you exist in. And I thought, wait, how's that possible? I don't care if you have a million non-existing planes. If you put them together, you still don't have existence. That didn't work for me. I thought, if the dot doesn't exist, the line doesn't exist, the plane doesn't exist, you don't have existence. 